really excited to get the tournament started. Uh, you're always anxious uh, as you lead up to game day, and I, I think tomorrow will probably feel like a, a long day, but I'm excited to get back on the floor and uh, super excited to host in front of our fans. I'm proud that we've been able to uh, put a, a schedule together and a body of work together where we can host. I think that's great for our program and great for our fans. Questions for the student athletes? What does it mean that you get to start and you're home, you're with all your fans? What are you feeling like? Brooke, would you like to begin? Sure. Um, it's very exciting. I mean, I've said all year, like, our fans are like our sixth man out there. And so just to be out there and playing in front of them again and hear their excitement, because I know they're probably more excited than us, um, it's just really exciting. Just looking forward to it. Anything to add, Ariel? Basically what Brooke said, it's extremely exciting. Um, we get to see them screaming and hollering and going crazy for us during the game. And they're just support all season long. It just means a lot to be able to play in front of them again. Jim? Uh, Jim Bertino with the AP. Brooke and Ariel, for both of you, you're seniors now. You have been kind of the glue and the nucleus here that's gotten Texas back to where people always think this program should be. What, how are you approaching this last NCAA tournament? And uh, what's, what's at stake personally for you as you, end your, as you get close to the end of your career? Brooke, let's start with you again. Um, I think I'm just kind of going day by day, approaching it just – as probably as just, um, let's see, uh, I don't really know. I'm just taking it day by day and just having fun with it and enjoying these last moments, especially getting to play here for probably our last time. Is, it's just a lot of emotions that go into it, but I'm just taking it day by day and enjoying the process. I'm absolutely taking it day by day. It's kind of one of those things where you don't want it to end. Um, I love this team. I love everything about this program, this culture, and being a part of it has just been – kind of a surreal feeling. So I'm just thankful to be here and excited to keep it going. Um, they're a good basketball team. They have shooters, they have people that can drive. Um, their guards are pretty versatile. They can score at basically every level. So that'll present a challenge for us. And they they stick to what they do and they execute very well. And so we're going to have to stay disciplined and just kind of no personnel, follow the game plan. Jim? Uh, I'm just going to follow up. At this point, yeah, you got, you got to win one game to get to the next. Beginning of the season before you started, was it like Final Four or bust for either of you? I mean, was there any of that, that conversation anywhere for the two of you? Not really. I mean, of course, that's the common goal, but I think that we did a really good job this year of taking it day by day and worrying about who we have to play next that next day. And so, um, of course, it's a goal, but at the same time, we have opponents in front of us who on any given night can show you anything. And so we just have to kind of stay in the moment. Ariel, anything to add? Um, definitely take it day by day. I don't think, honestly, at this point, anything would be a bust to our entire career. I think we've came here and have given Texas everything that we have, although we still have more to go. Um, like I said earlier, we're just thankful to be a part of this program. And at this point, it's just fighting for the next day. I think they definitely are important to our team, but Audrey's been out for a while now. And so I think we've kind of, um, kind of tried to fill that role as best as we can. And then um, Rella, she brings a lot to the table too, but we're just going to have to, you know, we have the people who we have, and so we have to play and go to the next day and just keep rolling. Uh, what are some advantages that you feel like you have over Maine that you kind of want to lean on during the game tomorrow? Ariel, would you like to begin? I would think our length, um, just – I guess me personally, I'm kind of a long guard, and our posts have a height advantage, I believe, um, with Jatari being a little, I think, two to three inches taller than their tallest post player. So I think that'll be part of our advantage tomorrow. Definitely, I would just piggyback off what she said. Um, I, I do think we have a post advantage, and so we kind of need to feed off of them tomorrow.
there any more that urgency? Urgency is the wrong word, but excitement, knowing that this is your last go around in the NCAA tournament? Butterflies, anything along those lines? For either of you? I'm just extremely excited. Um, you dream about this since you're a little kid, and for it to be my last time being in this tournament, um, is I guess you could say it's not nerve-wracking, but you, it is butterflies. This is my last time. It's our last chance, and to be a part of this program that has continuously been in this tournament, um, just can't say enough about it. I think our coaches have done a really good job preparing us for it every year and making sure that it's one of our main goals is to be in the tournament. Brooke. Definitely. I mean, it's, I don't think it's necessarily hit me yet that it's our last time playing in the NCAA tournament. And I think it will tomorrow, maybe when <laughs> we get to run out there in front of our fans again and everything like that. And so I don't know, it's not hit me yet, but it is just crazy to think that is, this is our last go around. <clears throat> Um, Brooke? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> um, I'm very thankful for her. She, you, can't, you can't really see it when you first get here, and you can't really see the light at the end of the tunnel. But as I look back and kind of just remember everything that has gone on here, just she's been a person who's pushed me like, to my limits and passed my, passed my limits. And she's kind of made me a better player and a better person at the same time just because she's so passionate about her job that you can't help to be passionate about playing for her. And so when you look back on it, it's just like, it's my last couple of times playing for her, and nobody has pushed me has she, how she's pushed me these past four years, and I'm, I'll be forever grateful for that. Absolutely. I think passion is one word that you will obviously hear when you hear the coach's name. Um, her passion, her belief in Texas when she first took the job here was, it was just, you couldn't explain it. And when she relayed that to me when I was trying to come here, and I just, you could feel the passion in her voice. You could hear how much he wanted to do for Texas. And that's something that you just can't help but believe in. And I believed in what she was trying to do here. And she's just a great person and somebody that you really can't put into words what she's done for you here. And I'm extremely thankful. Anything more for the student athletes? All righty, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As a reminder, uh, the Texas locker room is open until about 2.40, and we'll go ahead and open it for uh, questions for Coach. Jim. Aaron, I'd ask you about, about these two players, you know, kind of what they were when they came in and what they threw down that helped you do here over the last few years. And just when you got the technical up in up the big well, it looked like on TV that, that Brooke was the one who was kind of rubbing your shoulders a little bit, trying to, <laughs> trying to call the situation. What kind of relationship do you have with her? Um, it's really special. I, I, I've said this many times that I've been fortunate to, in my career, who, to have coached some really good point guards, which one of them is my assistant coach. And, you know, Brooke ranks up there with the best of them. Just, she reflects me as far, I mean, the words that she just used were passion and you, know, you don't see it sometimes because she's not as emotional maybe, but Brooke is very passionate about basketball and passionate about being the best she can be. And I would say the same thing for Ariel. So they reflect, I think, my feelings about the game. And they reflect what they came here for is the same thing I came here for. So they're a mirror of me and how I feel about Texas, and they're a mirror of what our jobs are. My job when I got here was to do everything I could to make Texas better. When I took the job, that's all it was about to me. And when I recruited them, that's all it was about to them, was they wanted to impact our basketball program. And, I mean, knocked it out of the park with that. That's all I know to say. I mean, they have been model student athletes at Texas and their impact will be felt, you know, way past when we're all here just because of what I think the fans think of them and what the people across the country think of them. 
it's hard for me to think about. Uh, I mean, it, it, I've been with them so long. It's just really hard to even, I think today's the first day it sort of hit me when you guys started talking to them that they're, they're about to be done here. Mm-hmm. I was with you at Cal years ago when that was a really tough trip. Um, how big an advantage do you have when you walk onto the court and it's your court? You're, you know all the numbers. And I think there's a comfort in being at home and sleeping in your own bed and not having to get on the plane and travel. I don't know, other than, I mean, if you reflect back to last year, I think once we started to make the run against NC State, the crowd definitely was a factor in that game because we started to feed off of them. But I will say even through my experiences at Cal, I mean, once you get between the lines, it, it's a basketball game and everybody's here to win. And everybody has the same goal and the same purpose. So I'm not sure the advantage is felt once the game begins, other than if it gets tight and your team can fuel. Um, I do say from that experience, though, that where I think hosting comes into play is possibly down the line if you do advance. Because we felt, you know, the pain of the travel, needless to say, when we left the West Coast and had to go East in the regionals. So I would say that I'm not sure that it is as big of an advantage maybe in the moment, other than the chance to play in front of your fans. But as you go along, it, it probably does weigh in. In the back? Coach, you were saying a couple weeks ago that last year they didn't have as much attack on their staff as you hoped on posting some time. Do you see a difference this year? I do. I do. I, I think that because we have a mix of, of youth uh, with our older players, I mean, you have to be careful with these two because they're in the gym all of the time, so I have to limit their their time in practice. And we've, we've tried to be sharp and crisp and not spend a lot of time because we do have experienced guards. Um, and I think Jatari's gotten so much experience playing that, you know, four out of our five starters are pretty seasoned. So I, I think that we've been able to be pretty sharp and pretty precise with what we're looking for. Um, I think it was good. I will be honest to say that it was good that we had some time after the loss to t reflect, take, take a few days off maybe, and even regroup and, and get our – our pep back again. Uh, that was a difficult loss in a lot of ways, and so I think that it, we needed the time uh, to regroup. They, I mean, I gave them the weekend off, so some of them got to go home, and I think just seeing their moms and have some home cooking and things like that are really good for kids sometimes. I feel like you have an, an edge in length and height against Maine, and if I'm not mistaken, in the previous few weeks, George Posey has actually made the start against Florida team. Well, I definitely would agree that we potentially could have an advantage in the paint. I think what we have to be careful of is that we are a pretty free-flowing team when we're good. Um, I think even though we have an advantage, I think that we need to be careful about thinking that we're just going to pound the ball inside. I would guess that they'll have some answers for that in some ways. So I think that being aware of taking what the defense is giving you is really important for tomorrow because, you know, Maine presents some some different problems for us, uh, definitely for us on the defensive end, end, but I think we we just need to stay aggressive. We need to stay in our style of play. Our guards have been our best scorers all year long, so even though I think we have an advantage, we need to, we need to do what – what we what's available, um, and if that means that the guards are open for shots, they need to take shots because there are there are main scores. I think what we don't need to do is forget about the post players. No, no, and she wasn't playing a lot of minutes, and I I think that first of all, when you get towards tournament play. I mean, we were able, luckily, in the Big 12 tournament to play a lot of people uh, because we did have a lead in, in both games where we were able to do that. But, I mean, the, the rotation trims in tournament play, I, I think that's a realistic statement. So 
I think the bigger key is just getting everybody prepared, even if it's a minute or two. Uh, I feel very comfortable with Mide coming in and giving us a few minutes of defense and rebounding. I feel very comfortable. I think Callie is, even though she hasn't gotten the minutes when I watch her in practice, you can definitely tell that she's the most comfortable that she's been all year. Again, she missed a large portion of the year with an injury. So I feel, I feel fine. Uh, I feel really good about where we are. Um, you know, I think we've, we've got to get, continue to get Joyner in the spaces that she's comfortable in, and I think that's up to the coaching staff, not Joyner. Well, I, I think one thing that I've had to remind myself repeatedly is that Joyner missed, I'm going to preface this, preface this with saying there's a reason why you practice. There's a reason why the NCAA gave us opportunity to work with our student athletes in the summer because you wanted to work with their skills. You wanted to have some time to work on offensive skill work, footwork, timing, breakdowns of offense, all of those things. I'm assuming that's, that was the reason why the NCAA gave us leeway to work with them in the summer. And there's a huge advantage to that. Um, and that's all we work on in the summer is offensive skill work. And if you're putting in an offensive scheme, then you get to work on those schemes in the summer and the fall. Joyner missed all of that. So what's been the challenging part is that we have guards that are very free-flowing and the – offense that we ran was probably predicated on what our guards are capable of doing and now we're 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 implementing joiner in that system that she missed some time in and it's taken us some time sometimes to figure out where is she the most comfortable and where what what offensive scheme does that work with so against certain opponents there's different things that you have to look for and I think that's the challenge of our staff to make sure and I don't even just mean Joyner. I mean, even when you put Jordan in, it's kind of the same situation. What offensive scheme works the best with the certain lineup? And so I think we've, we've tinkered with some things over the break that I think will help. But she needs to be in space where she's comfortable. A lot. I think the players hit it on the head pretty good, so at least they're listening. Um, they can shoot, and, and they've got a lot of craftiness to them. Uh, uh, you know, they, they can pass the basketball really well. They run offensive schemes that make you move a lot defensively, um, and they can shoot the three really well. So they kind of test your discipline, so I thought Brooke hit that on the head, that we need to be a very disciplined defensive team. Um, I think there's some mismatch challenges for both teams. I think that there's a chance we'll have to go with four guards tomorrow some, and I'm, not, I'm very comfortable with that if we do that. But, and I think if anybody watched us sort of down the stretch, there were times in Big 12 play that we went to the four-guard lineup, and it's actually a very effective lineup for us. Um, won't shock me if we don't need to do that some tomorrow just because of, of how they spread the floor and their capabilities at their forward position. I, d I definitely think that's been part of why that lineup against spe specific teams has been good for us because it enables us to sort of revert back to the offense that we ran pretty consistently in the first semester. So I think that that lineup gives everybody a little bit of a different look. Having Ariel at the forward position is a mismatch problem. Um, but again, we have to be able to match up defensively to be able to do that. Um, so that's the challenge sometimes. There's not too many teams that we can't do that with, but there are a few. That that's not a reality for us. But I like, I, I'm very comfortable with the four guard lineup. But to answer your question again, Maine, Maine can really spread it. And they can score in a lot of different ways. We're going to have to be really good on defense. 
Anything else for Coach? Coach, are you able to give us any more details about why Rella won't be available during the tournament? No. All set? In the back. Um, um, for both of the regular seasons, especially the last two months, we've been playing teams that very, that we're very familiar with. Um, for tomorrow, you're going to play a team that they already played before. Mm -hmm. How does your team, uh, how does your team, how does your team going to approach that? I think that's the fun part about the NCAA tournament is that you can breathe a little bit. And I would say that every coach in the country and every player in the country kind of feels that way is you get away from conference play, in particular in the Big 12, because of the fact that we play the double round robin. By the time you get to the second one, everything has come to a screeching halt because you know each other so well. So it is a breath of fresh air for us, I think, to be able to play someone that's maybe not quite as familiar with the way we play or the tendencies of our individual players. And, I mean, Maine would probably say the same thing. Uh, it, it's just a little bit of an adjustment period as you go along in the game to get used to someone's style of play. Um, so I think it's, it's a little bit of a breath, and we enjoy it. It's a new season. Um, I, I think the players enjoy having that reset button pushed.